the bubble seeding games are over and it's been crazy. Some players coming out of nowhere, putting up crazy numbers like TJ Warren in his 53 or Luka with this ridiculous triple double. But there's been none crazier than Damian Lillard, who in the eight seeding games he played in the bubble, averaged 38 points and 10 assists on close to 50% shooting from the field and 44% from three going along with four 40 point games, two 50 point games, and a 60 point game. Proving why he's one of the best players in the league and one of its best guards. Separating himself as a generational talent at the point guard spot and painting the blueprint for future guards to come. Now that I made that clear, stop saying he's better than Steph Curry. One, I don't like invalidating a player's amazing play and success by comparing him to one of his peers instead of enjoying what he's brought to the game. But this has to be said. If there's one thing basketball fans are good at, it's getting lost in the moment. And time and time again, when a player is having a great streak or a great year, we pit them against or above NBA greats. Players that have done so much more in their career and deserve their respect. Whether it's putting James Harden above D-Wade or Kobe, or people that are so quick to anoint Kawhi as the best player in the league off one finals run. Or any point guard remotely playing great to Steph. Now this video was sparked by this tweet and Max Kellerman saying this. Has turned over the years into a clutch player, a money on the line in the finals type player, but he hasn't always been that way. A lot of times Steph did not play his best in the finals, right? And we don't know. Let's see if how deep Damian Lillard gets into the playoffs. He could still have bad games. But Damian Lillard is like Steph Curry, but a Steph Curry who gets better in the bigger in the biggest moments. That's an unstoppable force. Now, although there's many things wrong with this statement, the problem I have with it is that it insinuates that years of dominating basketball can just be brushed aside by just a couple months of MVP level play. So let me just take a couple moments to remind y'all who we're talking about. It's October 27, 2015. The Golden State Warriors just came off their breakout year, winning their first NBA championship since 1975. And in ordinary cases, they'd be the favorites to win the championship the next year. But this isn't a normal scenario. Since in 2015, the Warriors got away with what many people consider a fluke, as they won the championship against a beat non Cavs team that didn't have two of their three All-Stars, and it still took them six games as they played against a man possessed in LeBron James. But what's even worse for Steph Curry is that he didn't even win Finals MVP. The award went to his teammate Andre Iguodala, who got it for playing phenomenal defense on LeBron James in the last three games. This led many people to question just how good Golden State was and is Steph Curry really the best point guard in basketball? And these questions were quickly answered in the 2016 season. As just in the season opener, he dropped a 40 point bomb on the New Orleans Pelicans and went on to average 30 points, seven assists on 50, 45, 90. But those numbers don't even sum up the lethal dose of greatness that Steph injected into the league. This translated to him winning the league's first unanimous MVP and helping the Warriors win the league record 73 games. But I think we all know the story. I think we all know how this ends. They choked. Throughout a great season, Steph Curry got injured late in the playoffs and wasn't the same in the finals. But I think we all know this is the year that cemented Steph as the best point guard in the game. Or at least it should have. But that didn't stop the media from using Kyrie's insane performance in the finals to pit him against Steph and completely ignoring all the things that led up to that final series. And since then, they've pitted every single point guard who's playing well against Steph. As in 2017, it was Russ this time as he dominated the league at a statistical standpoint and averaged a triple-double. But with proving around again, as Steph continued to dominate the league and win his second title. Then in 2018, they had multiple options, as Russ, again with new teammates, looked to enter the playoffs, and Kyrie with his own team looked to dominate the league too. But again, proven wrong. And you'd think that'd be enough to kill the noise, but no. 
as is Clay's injury in the finals and Kevin Durant leaving the offseason, leaving Steph alone to play in the 2019-2020 season. The media looked for any way to discredit Steph, saying that if he didn't make the playoffs, he's not the best point guard in the league, or that he's not a true NBA great. And with his injury early in the year, many questioned if he was healthy, if they still wouldn't even make the playoffs. And then we get to now. As with Dame's dominating play, the league seemed to have forgotten just who started this deep shooting trend and the premier shooting the league is. As the league has found their new fighter to challenge Steph for the crown. And though I love Dame, this isn't fair. And this isn't to discredit Dame, but he just doesn't have the accolades to match up. Even their head to head numbers don't even look great. And while I could talk about the percentage from 30 feet, scoring numbers, accolades, I'll just simply state this. Dame and Steph have met each other 30 times, including the regular season and the playoffs. And with each meeting, it just shows just who the superior player is. Because Steph has won 24 of those meetings and has never lost to Dame once in the playoffs. All while sporting far superior numbers, all while using Dame as what looks like a stepladder just to get to the next round. So it's just not even a debate. Dame is clearly losing. And when next season comes along, I'm pretty sure the people are in for a rude awakening of just who Steph Curry is.